Okay, so in this video, we're going to introduce the concept of partial derivatives. Um, and we're just going to focus on sort of understanding where the definitions come from, not so much on the computational aspects, because I'm very confident that everyone will quite quickly get the hang of computing partial derivatives, because it's, it's every bit as straightforward as computing derivatives in one variable, because you only deal with one variable at a time when you're doing a partial derivative. Um, but let's think about, you know, where does the need for a partial derivative come from? Um, well, let's think back to how things look in Calc 1, right? So in Calc 1, we have this definition of a derivative that says something like this, right? We say that in one variable, we can say, oh, well, there's this thing called the derivative the derivative of a function, and it's defined as a limit. Limit as h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a over h, right? And we say, oh, if you can, uh, if you can evaluate this limit, if the limit exists, you get a number, and that number is the derivative. And of course, you have this nice interpretation that, okay, well, this, uh, this has this meaning in terms of slope of a tangent line, right? We draw these pictures. You know, we think of A and A plus H. These are nearby points. You look at the corresponding Y coordinates. You draw the secant lines, um, this whole story. Right. So we have this idea of, of what derivatives look like in one variable. And so then your, your first temptation, if somebody gives you, you know, a function of more than one variable, let's say... Let's say somebody gives you something like this. So somebody gives you a function f with some domain d in our n. So it's a function of several variables. And you know, maybe even just to make life interesting, we, uh, we take it to be a vector-valued function. But you can stick to real-valued here. It's going to be the same story. Um, it's, the, uh, it's the dimension of the domain that's significant here more so than the dimension of the codomain. Um, Okay, and, and so we might say, so, so let's say we write this, we'll use this vector notation that I mentioned, so we might say something like, you know, y equals f of x as, as shorthand. Now this is, you know, and why do we write this? It's because this is a lot easier than writing something like, you know, y1, y2 up to y k equals, you know, f1 of x1 x2 down to xn, f2 of, uh, okay, yeah, it's like I'm already tired of this, right? Um, you know, this, this, uh, this gets pretty tedious, so we, we like the vector notation, it's a lot faster. Uh, so you might, you might be tempted to try to mimic. Uh, mimicking, mimic, uh, let's say mimicry. Uh, so we say, yeah, let's, let's just mimic the definition that we had in one variable and see where it takes us. And, and so we say, okay, well, let's, uh, let's do something like this. F vector prime, and yeah, maybe that should be a vector two, you know, at A uh, is what? So the limit as the vector H approaches the zero vector of f of a plus h minus f of a over... Okay, well, now here's your first issue, right? Um, what does it mean to divide by h? h is a vector, right? So there's no, there's no notion of division for vectors, you can only divide by numbers, so how do you fix it? Um, well, it turns out there's, there's a fix, and, and we'll see this showing up in some de definitions later on. One of the ways you can fix it is to divide by the magnitude. Okay, and, and now you at least have a meaningful expression, right? Because, and again, another one of the advantages of vector notation is you can add vectors, right? So a plus h, this makes sense. Um, and, and this, I can take the difference of two vectors, so that makes sense, right? Um, I guess this should still be vector, vector. Uh, but 
there's still one problem, right? And it's this problem we saw when we looked at limits, which is that if you're dealing with a limit in several variables, you have to make sure that this limit does not depend on direction. And it's a zero over zero limit. So there is that risk. So let's see what happens. Let's try an example. So let's consider Let's consider something like this. Let's say we try um, f of x, y equals something like x squared plus 3y, right? And, and we try to write down, and oh, I guess maybe I should have had a prime here, right? f prime, right? So, so we try to kind of do this derivative. So we try to write this, this sort of limit down. So we might write down a limit that looks something like this. We might say the limit as maybe h and k go to 0, 0, f of x plus h, y plus k, minus f of x, y, over, well again, we want some sort of magnitude here, so this is going to look something like h squared plus k squared. And, and, and so you, you might say, okay, let's give this a try. And so you want to evaluate this limit. And, you know, the first thing you might do is say, well, let's, let's kind of do like some of these examples we've seen. And let's see what happens if we try a couple different paths. So let's say we approach uh, parallel to the x-axis. So we take k equal to 0. So if we take k equal to 0, then we're dealing with a limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h, and then simply y, because k is 0, minus f of x, y, over, well, this is just going to be h, right? I mean, OK, maybe absolute value of h, but um, we won't worry about that technicality. And so what does this limit look like? This looks like the limit h going to 0, x plus h squared, plus 3y. So this bit here is what I get from f of x plus h and y, right? I put x plus h in for the x there. 3y is still 3y. Subtract f of xy. x squared plus 3y over h. And you'll notice that the 3y's cancel out and well, you get something that looks an awful lot like a limit from Calc 1. And, well, you can probably take it from here, or maybe you even recognize what the result is going to be. The result is going to be 2x when all is said and done, right? Because this is, this is exactly the same limit that you would have written down if somebody said, you know, just, just find the limit of x squared. You know, or take the derivative of x squared rather, right? So, so we're just doing we're doing the derivative of x squared from the definition in Calc one. That's the limit we'd write down. That's the answer we would get, right? So, really, what happened here is is we held y constant, and then we kind of took the derivative with respect to x. Um, you could do the same thing along a line that's parallel to the y-axis, so you could take h equal to 0, um, and you'll find that what you get, and we'll do kind of the same procedure, except this time we put h equal to 0, so we'll have uh, a plus k here, we'll have a 0 there, that'll be a k on the bottom. Um, you'll get the limit as k goes to 0, of, well, the x's are going to cancel out. You're going to get uh, 3 times y plus k minus 3y over k. And, and you get 3 for the answer, right? And, and so for, well, pretty much all values of x, 3 and 2x are different answers. And so you can see that this, uh, this doesn't work, right? It, it, it depends on the path, right? It's in fact highly dependent on the path. Um, 
And so what we do, the reason we look at partial derivatives, so partial derivatives are going to be, well, two particular paths, the horizontal path and the vertical path. And that's where these definitions come from for partial derivatives. Um, we uh, will start there. We won't restrict ourselves to that. We are going to look at other paths. We're going to look at other directions. We're going to get to something called a directional derivative later on where we consider other straight line paths. Um, but partial derivatives is where we begin, right? So if you're, if you're kind of trying to do this limit, which doesn't exist along a horizontal path, you get the partial derivative with respect to x, which just means that you hold y constant and you let x vary and you consider you know, the difference, right? Uh, the partial derivative with respect to y, it's a vertical path, you hold x constant, you let y vary, you take the derivative as usual, right? Um, so ultimately what it boils down to is if I were going to take partial derivatives of this, I forget about the limit definition just like we do in Calc 1, I say, what's the partial derivative with respect to x? Well, I treat y as a constant, I take the derivative with respect to x. So if I'm treating this as a constant, the derivative of that is 0, derivative of x squared is 2x, right? If I'm doing the derivative with respect to y, I'm treating x as a constant, so its derivative goes away, the derivative of 3y gives me 3, right? Um, so, Derivatives are mostly business as usual. You just have to deal with one variable at a time. And we'll, uh, we'll see plenty of these examples in class.